no? So, hey, thanks to all of you for being here. Um, I will explain you the omics PCA. So, first of all, um, during these days we have been seeing the different omics data how to analyze. So we have very nice data types. There's also we can have keywords data and some of that. But the idea of the course and what everyone really wants to do is like to sorry, um, find some connection between the different features from each one of the omics and between the different omics. So the idea is how we can integrate all this data. And there are several methods that we can more or less categorize like, like this. So there's concatenate based methods that working so with this one of these squares, it's a one data set, we can concatenate there, uh, okay, and then try to apply some kind of statistic, statistical method to answer our question. Then there's another approach that is transformation based integration methods that you can apply a specific transformation from each one of the omics data sets and then these transformations allow us to merge the data and answer the question. And finally, the model-based integration method that is more likely what Vincenzo has been explained to you before, that you get the values from some of the questions and then you can merge to mean power. So basically the omics PCA is a kind of concatenate-based integration method. So as most of you will know, the principal component analysis is a unsupervised method that wants to provide a global view of the, the data set, so it's a, a kind of exploration of our data. It's a multivariate method that also is known as a dimension reduction method or a latent variable method that the goal is identify a set of new variables that we will call components um, that are a linear combination of the original variables in order to reduce the dimension of our matrix. To give you a, a brief example and a background for all of the people that is here, of what, how work the component analysis. So imagine that we have the measure of one gene and then a second gene over the time, and we see that when the gene one increased expression, the second gene also increased expression. So we can think that the gene, the first gene, is driving the expression of the second gene or in the other way around. But really what is happening in that case is that increasing the time, then both genes are increasing. So these genes are correlation. So we can explain the expression of both genes using a new variable that is a combination of these two genes and we can call um, rows. So we perform the regression and so and then the new variable is called grow. It's the main variable of our data that capture most of the variables and it's what we know as a principal component. Basically, we have the row, a coefficient for the first gene, and another coefficient, uh, coefficient for the second gene. This coefficient um, we will know as a, as a log, is the contribution of each one of the variables in the new variable that we are defining. And the uh, values of the, of the new variable is what we know as scores. And basically, the growth is the linear combination of, of each two variables. But what to do if we have more than two variables, so like an omics, we have a very large number of variables, of features, genes, CPG size, etc. Um, and how to make this a, a meaning visualization so we can combine in some of smart way, and this is what principal component analysis does. So basically, reduce our large data matrices to extract the most important factors and help to understand and view a, a little bit the, the, the variability. Data. So just to summary, um, if we have two variables, we can write like this. If we have n variables, then our principal component will be defined. So if we have this original data matrix, then we will compute uh, the loadings for each one of the n variables. This here is the variables, and this the n is the number of samples. So we have the rows, and this will give us the linear combinations and the score for each one of the samples. So this is the, the principal component and the variable that we are creating for each one of the samples. We 
we can write this like a, a matrix. So the principal components, it's the matrix of data multiplied by the loadings and some error or define the data as the matrix for the vector of the, the scores, the principal components multiplied by the transformation of, of the loadings and some error. So basically, um, what we can get is from this data, it's uh, an example of mRNA data, um, summarize the data into components and basically the first component is explaining the difference between controls and, and cases and the second the effect of time. Okay. One important thing when we work with the principal components is that we can have different variables that have different that are measured different, so we should centering and scaling the data to give to each variable an equal change to contribute to the model. So this is an important point uh, in these methods. So one way to do that is a, a mean centric, so maybe subtract the mean of each of these columns. So to each one of these, the, the complete the mean and, and remove from that. And another way of scaling is um, the minimum score for the standard deviation. So we get the same contribution Variable. So in general, for a simple principal component analysis, we will first reprocess the data, so centering the scaling if it's needed, um, then perform the, the PCA of the data, decide the optimal number of, uh, of components, plot the results, then we can interpret the, the components and try to perform a kind of variable selection. So basically just here, um, so a way to decide the optimal number of components, so here we have uh, its component are uh, explaining us some percentage of variance. And we see that clearly there's a point, an inflection point, that then we are not winning a lot, including more um, components. So this will say us that basically we can explain most of the variability of our data with the three uh, first components. Then to plot the results, um, we can plot both the loadings and the scores. Normally we will plot the, the scores that are the values for each one of the variables and then give colors according to some factor of interest. But also we can see the loadings of which these arrows are and, and finally regarding the variable sele selection basic, uh, basically, um, we can take a look on the, on the loadings and see which are the, the variables. So this is just to give a, a brief idea, but now okay, we have multiple omics, what we can do with the omics PCA. The idea is that the, the omics PCA assumes that there's some inner relation between the, the different data sets. So imagine we have mRNA data and microRNA data, and we think that there's some shared patterns between both of the omics that we will call the joint structure. And also there's some systematic variation that is associated to the individual omics and then some, some noise. So the strategy is to analyze um, jointly the overall common and distinctive variability of the different data sets. And what is very important is they should be the, the same samples. So we should have the both omics from the same cases in both, in both data sets. Um, and the challenge, how we define this joint structure and the distinctive structure. This is the, the idea. So it works like concatenated data. Then if we want, we can run a simple PCA with the concatenated data. But this is not the idea of omic PCA. We just try to identify if they are explaining in the same way the if they are sharing some patterns or not. To do that, there, there are different methods. There's Jive, Discoxca, and O2PLS. The three methods are implemented in the packet from Statera. And here you have the reference to go inside the whole to do they work. Um, yeah, and another important thing in the OMIX PCA, it's like in the normal PCA, you should scale and center. In that case, if we have data matrices with different um, number of features or that, uh, we can apply uh, for venues normalization 
that uh, makes that each data type contributes equally to the total variation of the concatenated matrix. So each data set uh, will have the same value. So how it works and what we will see now in the function section. Um, first of all, um, we apply a model selection method to calculate the optimal number of components, of common components and distinct components in the data. Then running the omics uh, component analysis that we will define the method that, that we want to apply. Uh, we identify the, the common and distinctive PCI data. And finally, we can we can plot the, the results. To the practical session, we will work with Neuroblastoma data. It's a data set that we are working a lot now. Uh, it's data from the Cancer Genome Atlas that Vincenzo showed you before the, the platform. So this is basically uh, store a lot of data, so omics data. In that case, um, we have data from methylation analysis, from the Illumina Red Array, transcriptomic, also a kind of microarray, uh, and mir um, microRNA data. <coughs> so, I don't know if you have any question. <laughs> okay. So, we will start with the, with the practical session in this data. There's the, I don't know if you have the code downloaded. 